It is 718. We will reconvene in open session this regular meeting of the Waco ISD Board of Trustees. Uh, welcome. Thank you all for attending tonight. I know it's uh, close to the holidays. You probably all have shopping to do, but we can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, your interest and support of the Waco Public Schools. As I tell you every month, uh, I would remind you again that the board's purpose is to set goals, listen to reports of the superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, and personnel appointments, and to make policy for the district. We are not here to make management decisions or to solve problems of individuals, as management is the responsibility of the superintendent and his staff. I would also report that we've been in closed session under sections 551.071, 551.074, and 551.0821, and no action was taken. Uh, we've got a pretty good crowd here tonight, so if you have a cell phone or other electronic device, if you would silence it uh, or turn it off at this time, we'd greatly appreciate it because we've got a lot of young people tonight that we want to recognize and make sure that everybody's able to hear their student's name read. Uh, thank you again for joining us tonight, uh, and, and we hope you enjoy your time with the Waco uh, ISD School Board. Uh, with that, we'd ask that you uh, join us as we pause for a moment of silence, for prayer, contemplation, reflection, or meditation. Thank you. We'll now move on to item six, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. DeBeer. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight, we are pleased to have a fifth grader from Crestview Elementary School to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please welcome Jonathan Marmalejo. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Dr. Nelson and board members, please join me in front of the dais for tonight's special recognitions. We'll begin the special recognition portion of this evening's meeting with an introduction of our pledge leader who attends Crestview Elementary School. Uh, Jonathan is a fifth grader at Crestview Elementary School and says that his favorite subject is science. He enjoys drawing and playing outside. Jonathan's teacher at Crestview says that he excels tremendously in science class. He seems to have a natural passion for science, including the experiments and activities that they do in class. He helps to lead the class by setting a positive example for his peers and by doing his best every day. His teacher reports that it's a great pleasure to have him in her class. When he grows up, Jonathan wants to become a doctor. Jonathan is joined this evening by his father, Daniel Marmalejo. Daniel, would you please stand so we can recognize you and thank you for sharing your incredible son with us. We also want to say thank you to our Adopt-A-School partner, Barnes & Noble, for donating the book and gift card that our pledge leader received this evening. Throughout this semester, we've been recognizing students who received perfect scores on the STAR test last spring. And this evening, we continue our recognitions with the final group of students who earned a perfect score on their STAR assessment. Uh, this month, we're excited to recognize 22 students for their achievement on the 2017 STAR test. And we'll start by recognizing a student who received a perfect score on the eighth grade star reading test while attending Atlas Academy. Angela Gonzalez is now a freshman at Waco High School. <clears throat> we 
with a perfect score on the STAR Algebra 1 exam, also while attending the Atlas Academy. Please welcome Christian Arias. And Nathaniel Tyus. Karen Rodriguez, who also received a perfect score on the Algebra 1 exam, was unable to join us this evening. Earning a composition score of eight on the English 1 exam, which is the highest possible and receives the designation of accomplished, uh, please welcome Bridget Eichenberg of Waco High School, is unable to join us this evening. James Ackerman. Also of Waco High School, Catherine Burnham. Paris Hookham. And Sophia Swinke. We'd like to recognize a few students who received an aid on the English One composition exam and were unable to join us this evening. That includes Andy Arterburn, Felicia Marquez, Renicia Patterson, now moving on to students who received a composition score of eight on the English two exam. Again, this is the highest possible score on the composition and receives the designation of accomplished. Please welcome Savannah Vedana, who attends University High School. And Savannah also earned a perfect score on the multiple choice portion of the English two exam. William Grant from Waco High School. Cara Jackson from Waco High School. Blasa Orozco from Waco High School. Ryan Rosado from University High. Soraya Rueda received a perfect score on the English II composition exam while a student at University High School. Giselle Solis from Waco High School. We had several students who received a score of eight on the composition exam for English too, who weren't able to join us this evening, but we'd like to recognize them as well. They include Anna Badillo, Paige Dupuy, Lizeth Flores, Hallie Morgan, Elena Perez, Maricel Torres, and Gabriela Vedana. Finally, joining us this evening and rounding out our group of perfect scores on the STAR tests, please welcome Dylan Rivera from Waco High School who received a... <laughs> Dylan received a perfect score on the U.S. History exam. I want to say congratulations again to the students we've recognized tonight and all of the students we've recognized this semester who received perfect scores on their STAR exams. And if you're the parent or a family member of one of the students we just recognized, would you please stand so we can recognize you as well? <laughs> we know that you play an important role in these students' success as well. Uh, last month, we had the privilege to recognize uh, several students who were selected for the Texas Music Educators Association Region 8 All Region Band. And tonight, we're pleased to continue by recognizing another group of students who were selected for that band. <laughs> These students prove that a quality, multifaceted education helps to build strong, well-rounded, college and career-ready students. Uh, in particular, these students have found a talent and skill in the fine arts and have taken the time to hone their craft to an exceptional level. 
Uh, please join me tonight in first congratulating from Cesar Chavez Middle School, Jonessa Martinez. <laughs> Jonessa plays the clarinet. And Juvenal Ramos, who plays the clarinet as well. The Cesar Chavez Middle School Band is led by Zachary Kane, who's with us this evening, as well as Stephanie Fernijo and Todd Majin. From Lake Air Montessori Magnet School, please welcome Roberto Alarcon, who's the alto saxophone player who was ranked number four in the entire region. Max Angel, the tuba player who was ranked top in the entire region. <laughs> Isabella Barrera plays the clarinet. <laughs> Alana Chapa plays the flute. <laughs> Jaden Flores plays the trumpet. Arch Archie Hatton is an alto saxophonist who is ranked number one in the region. <laughs> Sophia Henderson plays the clarinet and was ranked number two in the entire region. <laughs> Maya Lozano plays the trombone. Alan Rodriguez also plays the trombone. And Cynthia Zavala Hicks plays the tuba. We also had a couple of Lake Air Montessori Magnet School students who made the all region band that weren't able to join us tonight. Those are Aiden Dean and Gabby Dominguez. The Lake Air Band is under the direction of Noah Alvarado and Teresa Lee. We had two student musicians from Indian Spring Middle School who made the All Region Band. Please welcome Eliana Caro. She is the 10th chair in the concert band, and Joel Picasso, who's the sixth chair in the symphonic band. <laughs> the Indian Spring Band is under the direction of Stephanie Salazar. We're incredibly proud of these students and their talents and all that they've done to hone them. If you're the parent of one of these outstanding musicians, would you please stand so we can thank you at this time. <laughs> Congratulations again to these students and our staff members on their hard work and success in the regional band auditions. Waco ISD recognizes the need for a comprehensive and diverse education for its students, one with varied pathways that allows each student to develop and discover their passions. Uh, one component of that is our career and technical education program. The Waco ISD CTE department, its advanced academies, and director Donna McKethan have received numerous accolades for their innovation and demonstration of excellence. Uh, but tonight, we're excited to recognize uh, our CTE director for an exceptional recognition. Last Wednesday evening, the Association for Career and Technical Education announced their 2018 national award winners across seven different categories. And Donna McKethan, our CTE director, was recognized as the 2018 ACTE National Administrator of the Year.
This prestigious national award recognizes administrative professionals at the school, district, county, state, or federal level who have demonstrated leadership in ensuring teacher and student success and who have made significant contributions towards innovative, unique, and effective career and technical education programs. Uh, we're truly honored that Mrs. McEffin has chosen to call Waco ISD home and we're grateful for the impact that she has had on our students. Uh, this national recognition is truly well-deserved. Thank you so much and congratulations, Mrs. McEffin. And with that, we are concluding the special recognition portion of this evening's meeting. I want to uh, congratulate all our honorees tonight, the All-State musicians, uh, those who scored perfect scores on their star tests, and of course Donna McKethan for the ACT Administrator of the Year honor. And I think that says a lot, not only about all the hard work she's done, but also the support this community and the business community have had for the career and technology programs and, and what they provide for our students. So Donna, congratulations. We will move on to item eight, which is audience for guests. No one has signed up. Uh, this evening to speak, which brings us to item nine, the consent agenda. To the best of my knowledge, I've not been asked to pull anything. Does anybody want anything pulled from the consent agenda? All right, then I'll entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, Ms. Pettis. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Manning. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the consent agenda is adopted. We'll move on to item 10, discussion and possible action. This is a matter that we need to discuss in closed session. We've not had a matter opportunity to get to that yet, and we wanted to get out here for the special recognition. So we'll go into closed session, uh, consult with attorneys, and then we'll come back out and take action uh, on that uh, uh, mediation later this evening. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. So we'll move on to item 11, discussion and updates, uh, quarterly financial reports. Cheryl, is there anything you wanted to highlight there? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Um, as you know, we have experienced um, a loss in enrollment um, this year. So we have, um, as of the end of the second six weeks, um, we have projected what our state revenues would be based on that enrollment loss. We had increased our enrollment slightly during the budget process um, because we did have a large increase in enrollment last year. Um, but we are now at a, down about 249 students from, or ADA, from what we had budgeted for 2017-18. Uh, uh, as a result of that, our revenues, um, state revenues, will be down about a million three in the general fund. In spite of that, we actually have an increase in our career and technology in special ed because most of our loss in enrollment was at elementary level. We actually had some gains at secondary. So we will be monitoring those budgets um, over the next couple of six weeks. We may have to end up putting some additional funds into those programs. I know we will for special education because of maintenance of effort requirements, but um, I think at this point we may not need to for career and technology. Um, 
On another note, I just wanted to kind of point out, because we haven't really talked about it yet, for our food service fund, as we go through this year, you're going to see um, some differences in the patterns of expenditures. Um, based on state law, we had to change the way we, they're billing for meal reimbursements. And we went to a cost reimbursement method rather than what we used to do. Uh, um, price per meal and so the pattern of expenditures is going to be slightly different because before we were buying food and buying non-food supplies and you know that timing of that might be different but um, now we're just being billed on a per meal basis so that's going to be more consistent throughout the year so you'll see some differences as we go through the year um, are we on our athletics complex the revenue has decreased a little bit um, both the rental and ticket sales for football, although we are increased in our advertising and signage revenue. And then there's the tax collection report that's available. Um, it's up, of course, as far as our collections, which is to be expected with the kind of property value increase we saw. And then we have our investment report you will see some different investments than what we have had in the past as you look at our investment report. In order to generate some more revenue, we have done some investing in some securities and commercial paper. That's kind of new for us this year. Um, we actually did see a gain of about 25,000, an unrealized gain on our investment at the end of August. So um, if you have any questions about any of these, I'd be happy to answer them. Are there any questions from the board on the financial report, Mr. Pettis? Yes, uh, did you, I didn't hear you right. Did you say that uh, the ticket sales on athletics, were they up or down? Down. Rentals and ticket sales were down a little bit, and then signage and advertising revenue was up. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. do you oh, excuse me. Uh, do you know the reason why? or? Well, some of that... Why? When we come in next quarter, it'll be uh, a little more even, I think, and we'll know better whether it, they're really down. Uh, according to Johnny, they should be up. So it could be a little bit about the timing of that November cutoff. We may have had <clears throat> some rentals that hit more in the first part, or, or the money didn't come in until the first part of December. So the it playoffs. might be a timing issue. The playoffs don't start until November 11th. And so we don't start rentals till that week. And for the record, we've had, we had nine playoff games hosted at Waco ISD Stadium last year. We had nine hosted this year, so far. We'll know more when we look at them next quarter. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the trustees, Mr. President? Anybody else have anything else on the financials? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Dr. Nelson. We'll move on to presentation and discussion on Lone Star Governance. And our continuous improvement model tonight, we're looking at secondary gifted and talented program. Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Mr. President. We have our assistant superintendent of secondary education and advanced academics, Dr. Scott McClanahan, making the presentation. Dr. McClanahan. Good evening, Mr. President and board members. Uh, I wanted to finish our presentation from last week. We started with the uh, talking about the elementary gifted and talented program. And uh, so this week we're gonna start with middle school. Um, so currently our main model for middle school gifted students is uh, working through the Atlas Academy. Uh, this year our enrollment at the Atlas Academy is uh, 319 students. Uh, you, I've, you can see there that it's pretty evenly distributed through the, the three grades. And um, what we really focus on at this, in this program uh, is accelerating the classes uh, with more enriched pre-AP coursework. We also have our AP Spanish language class uh, at Atlas, which offers our students an ability to take that AP course as eighth graders. Uh, we also have Algebra 1 that they can take for high school credit, as well as a speech course and uh, a typing course, a touch data course. One of the other things that we did uh, that's a little bit different is across the district for middle school language arts is we have double blocked those courses so that the students have a reading and a writing course. But because our kids are accelerated at Atlas, we actually use the second 
part of that course is a research course so that we can focus on their state required gifted and talented project, which culminate in our May um, exploring inspiration uh, gifted and talented fair when we show those projects. Those projects are usually problem-based. The students identify a problem, they work to develop a solution and then implement it, and then they uh, give a presentation to community members about the service that they've done and the results of their projects. Uh, we have a pretty rich field trip um, lineup for the kids at the sixth grade. They go to Fort Parker and they have a Galveston science trip. At the seventh grade, they do a road to revolution trip where they visit historical sites throughout Texas during Texas government or Texas history class. They also do a nature's classroom institute uh, for science and they visit the Mammoth National Park. And then at eighth grade, while we're working on US history, they go to the Holocaust Museum in Dallas. They take a science trip to Cameron Park, and then they culminate in the Washington DC trip at the end of the year for students that are interested. We also want to really work on those students developing interests in careers and uh, various professions. So our eighth graders participate in STEAM Day through Region 12. And today was our middle school career fair uh, that was held in the Highlander Gym at MCC. And so we provided buses and we brought actually the eighth graders from all of our campuses out to MCC to visit with businesses and different college programs about different professions that are available that correspond to the endorsements that they will have to pick when they do their course selection next month. Um, in addition to that, one of the things that sets this program apart from things we're doing at other campuses is that we offer these interest-based mini courses. So we really look at what the students are interested in and um, what our teachers are interested in. And where those interests collide, we put together a six week mini course for those students. And we have everything from World Cup geography to um, uh, 80 plates around the world where they do all kinds of international cooking in the, in the kitchen. Um, we have uh, a brand new drones course that we actually won the Region 12 Technology Innovation Grant for this year. Um, so we have a lot of different uh, offerings for the kids and they get to change out of those every six weeks. So it gives them a little flavor of a bunch of different things that can really show them where their interests might lay. Um, in terms of competitions, our kids are active in UIL, uh, Destination Imagination. We usually have a few teams uh, very active in the National History Day Fair and in Science Fair. And then again, all of our uh, Atlas students complete an advanced products and performances project that they present at a local fair and then we have the district fair at the end of the year. Um, for the other middle schools where our students are not uh, being serviced by Atlas, um, we give them access to pre-AP coursework and um, we've gone through and done an audit of all of those students that are at the other campuses and have found that they take anywhere from one to four pre-AP courses. And uh, in addition, we also give those campuses, those students, the opportunity to do the research project and be a part of our advanced products and performances fair. Uh, we have active UIL and destination imagination teams at all of our middle schools. And last year, with the help of Mary Duty, we actually had students from all of our campuses participate in the National History Day Fair. Uh, we also have science fair as an option for those students um, who really have an interest in science. And at Indian Spring, we have an AVA robotics team that many of our students participate in. Um, as for, accomplishes, for accomplishments for our middle school GT, we have, you know, a number of history fair, you know, every year we roll through here with all kinds of local and state awards for history fair. Last year, Harper Hoover was a National History Day fair winner and she was an eighth grader at, at Atlas. Uh, we had the 2017 secondary teacher of the year this year was uh, the science teacher at Atlas. Uh, the teachers have really expanded what they're doing in the classroom to try to meet the needs of the students. So we have looked at many different research-based differentiation strategies for those students, whether that be things like flipped classrooms or menus, working in stations. And um, we've even gone to um, trying some different flexible seating in some of the classes uh, to see if that really helps our kids to best learn. 
uh, you just recognized this we, this board meeting and last that uh, we had 10 students with perfect scores on one or more of their 2017 star tests. We won the Region 12 Technology Innovation Grant. And what we see consistently from Atlas is that it's one of our draws to the district. We are constantly in the Advanced Academics Office having uh, parents from outside of the district contact us to have their students tested to see if they would qualify to be able to attend Atlas. We draw back kids from charter schools and private schools alike. And so it's really uh, one of our shining stars in the district. Um, I wanted to just show you what our um, Atlas star results look like overall. So you can see there, I've split them, um, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade reading. You see our, our passing rate and then the percent of students that reach mastery. Uh, writing the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math, algebra one, uh, which we were, which is a record for us, 100% pass with 82% of those students mastering. Uh, science and social studies. Uh, but I will, uh, I, I will tell you that after you know we had conversation, I went back and I actually pulled the uh, GT scores for the student scores at the other middle schools for the kids that are not attending Atlas. And uh, what I actually found is out of the ten middle school tests, Atlas only had the highest passing rate on five of them. Uh, those groups at those other middle school campuses are really finding ways to get their needs met. Um, out of the 10 tests Atlas had, seven of them had the highest mastery rate. So we see that the students that are left at the other campuses are also mastering the content. And so that really just says that our students, no matter what campus they're on, if they choose to stay at their home campus rather than to go to Atlas, they really are finding ways to get their needs met. Now at the high school level, um, because we offer so many different different programs for our students to participate in. Um, what we really focus on is acceleration. Um, a 2016 report that was a 40-year metadata study of every gifted study that had been conducted over that time found that the only research proven strategy for gifted students is acceleration. And um, two of those acceleration models are what we really use at the high school, and that is advanced placement and dual credit. So we have really worked on um, offering our kids different uh, academic as well as creative and artistic classes to meet those needs. Um, we, I listed there for you all of the different academic AP classes that we offer, and then we have also expanded uh, to where we have now three different art AP classes as well as music theory. Um, likewise, in our dual credit program, our Accelerate Early Degree program, uh, we actually have five different uh, degree pathways that they're able to follow. Uh, we have an Associate of Arts for those students who are really interested in more of arts and humanities, but we also have an Associate of Science, Business, Criminal Justice, and Allied Health. And so we offer those kids the ability to accelerate at their will. And one of the young ladies that you just recognized who got a perfect score on her star test last year will be our first Accelerate graduate from Waco High. She is actually graduating as a junior with her associate degree and her high school diploma. And so it shows that we really do give our students the ability to accelerate as their abilities allow them. And so we're really encouraged by that that development, but every year we're looking at different courses that the students are telling us that they're interested in and seeing if we can bring those in either under our AP umbrella or our dual credit umbrella. The other thing that we really want our uh, students to do to be able to build their leadership giftedness is to have ac different opportunities for recognition. And so we have a very active program in UIL academics at both high schools. Uh, we have debate, and our mock trial team went to state last year. Our debate team went to state last year. Our academic decathlon team is very active at Waco High. Um, this year, um, we had two students who participated in the Texas High School Aerospace Scholars. Um, Dylan Rivera, who was just recognized, actually was invited to be an intern at NASA over the summer and participated in that program. Um, 
one of our students last year um, was picked for the Generation Citizen Democracy Education Youth Summit because of his leadership, uh, Diego Salazar. He is now in his first semester at UT. Um, our high schoolers are still active and participating in the National History Day Fair and as well as Best Robotics. But we also have a very active um, offering for artistic and creative giftedness through our UIL fine arts in band, chorus, contest play, uh, our Texas educators, um, art educators on um, competition, the vase competition, a lot of our artists will put together pieces for that and actually compete in vase, as well as the TMEA, um, Texas Music Educators Association competition, where they can compete on the district, regional, and state levels for different chairs in the state orchestra and band. Um, finally, I wanted to break down for you, and um, Mr. Dupuy, I have checked the numbers, so they do total to 100, and that was our error last year. We just transposed, tr last week we transposed one of the numbers, so I apologize for that. But you can see here kind of what our secondary lines up, and, and what we're still dealing here is, if we look at the numbers, we're way over identified. Um, when our state average is at 7.8%, um, we're sitting at almost double that, and that goes back to when we had those local identification standards at the elementary level, and schools were just able to say, oh, this kid's gifted, this kid's gifted, and now we're using more of you know, a preponderance of evidence. We're looking at both qualitative and quantitative instruments that Ashley Duncan talked about last week so that we can really make informed decisions and be able to tell schools how students are gifted so that they can best service those needs. Um, but right now at grade six through 12, we are sitting with just over a thousand GT students that we're servicing. All right. so. Are there any questions from the board? Yeah, Ms. Sykes. Manahan. Yes. You mentioned the over identification. Are you saying that that's going to run its course and the percentage will be going down? It is. Because if you looked at um, our percentages that we had last week, they're closer to 9%. So um, if as we move through, these kids will graduate out and then we'll stabilize and be closer to the state average. But. The, 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 the positive is we're able, better able to serve those students with better identification. Right. We, and, and the thing is, is that since we, since we have got them identified, we make sure that counselors are giving them options, pushing them toward pre-AP and AP classes because we have, you know, had a past where we have identified that they had some kind of talent. What it really comes down to is the difference between high achievement and gifted and talented. And the state has different definitions of those two. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Mr. Manning. Dr. McClanahan, that young lady you're talking about, well, Jen, you're going to graduate. What did she do? She didn't have no life, did she? Um, she actually not only has taken a a uh, maximum level of, of dual credit classes each semester. She has taken winter semester classes. She has taken May semester classes. She had two classes each summer session this summer. On a, in addition to that, she is the principal violinist for the orchestra. She is in the musical in January. She has a part-time job at Nothing Bun Cakes, and she also is on the tennis team. Uh, no more questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Scott, can you go back one slide? Sure. Because I think to follow up on what you just alluded to, you know, and for anyone in our vast North American viewing audience that's considering where they want their, their children to go to high school, that slide summarizes, as well as anything, the reason to take a good, long, hard look at the programs in Waco ISD. Correct. I mean, I just know from experience now having three kids who've graduated from Waco ISD, you know, our, our youngest had an opportunity to do TME, TMEA, all, I mean, a lot of the all state choir, but also got to do one act play and also got to do the musical and also got to do debate and also got to do UIL academics and got to do history fair. And it is a unique opportunity where students can pursue so many different uh, interests uh, get exposed to so many different things and then because of the hard work of our teachers really excel uh, on a state level and so you know 
we talk about the success in the classroom. We'll recognize our AP scholars uh, in the summer, but all those other opportunities that you've helped create and really helped push students into as much as anything uh, really uh, define the unique opportunities you can get in the Waco ISD schools. Because it goes back to what we were talking about, about we really have to service the whole child. And if all we're saying is this kid is, is gifted in math, so we're just going to keep throwing more math at him, you know, that kid has other interests other than just math. And so we really want to make sure we give that child opportunities to do AP classes and music and theater. And um, it's one of the reasons why our dual credit program is very pliable. We make sure that we offer classes face to face. We also offer them where students can take them online. If they feel like they want to go to MCC's campus, we have students to do that. So because we don't want them to have to choose, you know, oh, I can't be in this program because I can't, I, I have choir that period. Well, then we have other options that we could look at. Yeah, and, and you're right. I didn't even mention all the dual credit opportunities through MCC and uh, really the great job all those teachers and coaches do working together on scheduling to provide students with all these opportunities to get to do. Uh, and I can give you an example, like um, Mr. Stuhler, um, band, varsity band is fifth period. Well, I have girls that are on the uh, criminal justice track for Accelerate, and Tuesdays and Thursdays, they go to the Emergency Services Education Center to take their criminal justice classes at MCC. Well, so he has been flexible enough that he allows them to miss band on those two days and doesn't take their chair away from them. He allows them to catch up on the days that they come back. They can come in on a different period and sit in band so that they can make sure that they're attending. And on the opposite days, then they have a lab where they can work on their work for that class. And so we've just tried to, you know, make sure that we don't, we don't take opportunities away from the students. Well, I just want to commend you, the administration, as well as uh, Coach Love and Mr. Edison on really creating that culture uh, of providing students as many opportunities as we can on those campuses. Other questions, uh, comments from the board? All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And I did not announce when that report began for our Lone Star governance, but we did begin at 743. Uh, and it looks like we finished about 801, 802. So uh, we'll move on to the next report, gifts and grants to Waco ISD. Uh, is there anything you wanted to highlight, Dr. Nelson? No, sir. It's in the packet. All right. Uh, and now I get my soliloquy. We will move on to uh, reports and discussions on school board member continuing education requirements and our annual announcement on board training. The State Board of Education rules requires that the president of the board publicly announce which board members have met, exceeded, or are deficient in meeting their continuing education requirements. Annually, at the last regular meeting of the Board of Trustees held during a calendar year, the current president of each local Board of Trustees shall announce the name of each board member who has completed the required continuing education, who has exceeded the required hours of continuing education, or who is deficient in required continuing education as of the date of the meeting. It is a basic obligation and expectation of a sitting board member to complete the required board training each year. This information will be reflected in the board minutes as tier one, tier two, and tier three training and will be made available to the Take public. In accordance with the State Board of Education rules, each new board member will receive tier one training, which includes a local district orientation and a basic orientation regarding the Texas Education Code and relevant legal obligations. All sitting board members will receive updates regarding the Texas Education Code after each session of the Texas Legislature, including each regular session or called session related to education. So, with respect to tier one orientations, there are no first year board members requiring tier one credits. With respect to Texas Education Code orientation, there are no first year board members requiring Texas Education Code orientation, nor are there no training hours to report uh, due to no regular session and even number of years of the Texas Education required update training. With respect to Tier 2, teamwork, board members Pat Atkins, Alan Sykes, Norman Manning, Carrie Dupuis, Stephanie Cordaweg, Larry Perez, and Angela Tikel have all exceeded their Tier 2 teamwork requirement. With respect to Tier 3, discretionary continuing ed, 
Board members Pat Atkins, Alan Sykes, Norman Manning, Carrie Dupuis, Stephanie Cordeweg, Larry Perez, and Angela Tikal have all exceeded the required number of continuing education requirements for Tier 3. So with that, that concludes the report, unless any of you have any questions. All right, then we'll move on uh, to the last item, which is the update on the improvement required campuses. Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Mr. President. Last month, I told you that Waco ISD was applying for a transformation zone planning grant from the Texas Education Agency. Um, Deputy Commissioner A.J. Crable was here this evening to uh, announce that we learned our district is one of seven school districts uh, included on the preliminary list of grant recipients to receive a $450,000 planning grant. Uh, we're so very proud of the work of our grants department, our student services department, and really a host of other people who are helping making this work happen. Uh, while the announcement made is preliminary, there are still numerous details to be negotiated with the Texas Education Agency. This is an important development in our work to ensure that Alta Vista, Brook Avenue, J.H. Hines, <clears throat> G.W. Carver, and Indian Spring remain open. Since the first day of school, uh, I believe I've been pretty clear that I firmly believe all five of these schools can meet state standards this year. Uh, we're improving the quality of instruction daily. We're holding adults accountable for change and we're raising expectations for principals, teachers, staff, and most importantly, our students. Make no mistakes though, this is very complex work, and it might take more than one year for all of our schools to get there. If that happens and one of these five schools needs more time, I wanna make sure that they'll have the time to accomplish our goals. If we don't do anything and one of these schools is still rated as improvement required in August, TEA has made, been very clear, they will either close the school or our honorable elected school board will be replaced with an appointed board of managers. Legislation passed earlier this year gives us a clear alternative path. We can partner with a nonprofit organization to operate some of our campuses. If we do this, those schools will have two years to make it. And that's where the transformation zone planning grant comes in. If our negotiations with TEA are successful, the grant will provide funding as we plan to implement that partnership and other uh, reform ideas. There's an incredible network of nonprofit organizations here in Waco, Texas, and I've been humbled by how many organizations have stepped forward to offer their resources, expertise, and ideas in support of our beloved students. Every day, these organizations are working selflessly in service to our students and their families. To maximize these efforts, we need a partner that can coordinate several of the wraparound services that all of these organizations provide. With that in mind, I've met with Prosper Waco, the executive committee, early this morning. If you're not familiar with Prosper Waco, it is a collective impact initiative focused on addressing issues in the areas of education, health, and financial security through a focused collaborative effort. As a quote unquote backbone organization, Prosper Waco's expertise in coordinating the work of multiple organizations to address complex social problems is something that we believe will be an outstanding partner. Moving forward, our team will be working with the leadership of Prosper Waco to outline the details of our partnership in which Prosper Waco would operate several of our campuses as in-district charter schools. There are numerous details to be worked out, but I anticipate that one of our recommendations to the board next month will be that Waco ISD begin negotiating a contract with Prosper Waco to operate and partner on these improvement required schools. If approved by TEA, the partnership will give these schools two additional years, technically, to meet state standards. 
More importantly, I believe that the partnership will help better meet our students' educational, health, and financial needs. For too many of our students, food insecurity, inadequate housing, lack of transportation, and access to health care have become barriers to their learning. And we want to be focused in uh, being diagnostic and prescriptive for every student that we have as we address and, and seek and ultimately attain all of our academic goals. I would like to commend uh, our staff and our faculties for working uh, through these uh, meticulous mandates from the state of Texas. And we look forward to another update at our next scheduled meeting. Any comments or questions, Mr. President? Dr. Nelson, any comments or questions from the board? I just, two thoughts. Number one, with respect to the Transformation Zone grant, uh, I know most of your leadership team, cabinet is here. Uh, that was a very short turnaround. And each of you is to be commended as, along with the grants department for getting that amount of detail to TEA to where we were one of seven districts selected to move on to this next step and, and get to look at potentially additional funding to help with the planning of this. Uh, secondly, I want to commend you, Dr. Nelson, for your leadership uh, in being responsive to concerns you've heard from the community and from this board and in trying to come up with a plan that first and foremost will keep these schools open, uh, secondly, keep these schools under uh, local leadership, local control, so that this community has a say in the uh, direction and management of, of its public schools. And uh, I look forward to your next report on, on your negotiations uh, with Prosper Waco on exactly what the details of that partnership will look like. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Pettis. Yes, Dr. Nelson, uh, uh, what you just read, the report you just read, uh, it seems that the board already decided to uh, uh, accept the sponsor, uh, Waco, what do you call it, Prosper Waco as our partner. Is this correct? Um, no, sir. Our plan is to bring uh, a full formal recommendation, as I just said for the record, uh, that our plan is to bring a recommendation to the board in the month of January. Uh, to be quite honest, though, we, when we filled out the Transformation Zone Planning Grant, if you read the details of that document, it mentions uh, our proposed partner uh, several times. Since we've been awarded the grant, um, our public would be able to go to that grant and see Prosper Waco mentioned uh, thoroughly. Um, as I believe all seven trustees are well aware that this is a sensitive topic that we've talked through and vetted thoroughly. Uh, I have plans to discuss it tonight, uh, go back to the community with our plan that includes our partner. And so we still have lots of communication that we want to do with our families and, and quite candidly in this particular case with our board of trustees before we ask you to consider taking a vote at the January 25th meeting. Okay. So I apologize if it is being perceived as if we're moving on down the road. Prosper Waco's board of directors have taken no formal action, even though I have met with them and uh, both boards um, have to will need to have minutes reflected that there's been action taken for us to go forward. Okay. And when you say public input, does that, there will be a number of town hall or public meetings before this board will be taking action on your proposal? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nelson, I, the reason I asked this was because I don't want the media to take it wrong. Yes, sir. You know, uh, they, they hear something and then they print what, it's not really there. So that I, I just wanted to verify it, whether we had made a decision or not, so they could write it up right, print it right. Yes, okay. sir. It certainly has not been my experience that the Waco Tribune or Mrs. Conlon ever print anything wrong. They always are very accurate, and I want to thank you, and I'm confident that she'll continue that uh, standard and commitment to excellence. 
And I'm not talking about you either. My experience, <laughs> <laughs> my experience on the board over 16 years, I'm almost 16 years at that. that uh, I've learned a few things about the media, so. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pettis. Other questions or comments? Uh, then we look forward to your next step in bringing forward a recommendation and, and those times. Will the board get a calendar of the dates of the meetings and the locations? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. Is anything else on the uh, uh, improvement required campuses? No, sir. All right. Uh, Mr. Beer, are there other announcements? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this week, our students head into the winter break with an early dismissal tomorrow. We have professional development Monday and Tuesday, and then our offices are closed from December 20th through January 2nd. Our staff are back on the 3rd, and classes start on the 4th. And we go right into some really exciting events when we get back in January. The week of January 8th is College Insight Week, which is a whole series of events built around cultivating a college-going culture in Waco ISD. Uh, one of the coolest events that's happening that week are the alumni college fairs at Waco High School and University High School Monday night, January 8th from 6 to 9 where students who are recent graduates are going to come back and talk about their experience in college. Uh, both MCC and TSTC are hosting open houses for our students as the week goes on, so we're excited about that. On the 12th, Waco High School and University High School face off in basketball, and the 18th through the 20th, Waco High School has performances of Xanadu. So we're gonna be moving quickly when we come back. A lot of great events that we invite the community to join us with, and a lot of events that we're excited about for our families and our students. I also have one final announcement. We mentioned it earlier this week, but I wanted to make sure it was comprehensive in our update. I wanted to wish Trustee Larry Pettis, a very happy birthday on December 17th, this Sunday. And certainly last but not least, we'd like to recognize the board president, Mr. Pat Atkins, who will celebrate, uh, how old are you? I'm just 30, kidding. I'm uh, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> who will celebrate a birthday on December 29th. Happy birthday, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements uh, from the dais? Larry, if you want to sing happy birthday to yourself, I'll allow you to do so. Okay. Uh, then we'll pass on that. Uh, hearing no other announcements and no objection, we're going to recess back into closed session uh, for consultation with council as well as some personnel matters. And so at this time, uh, we will recess into closed session under sections 551.071, 551.074, and 551.0821 of the Texas Government Code. It is 925. We will reconvene an open session, this regular meeting of the Waco ISD Board of Trustees. We will go back up to item 10A, discussion and possible action. Uh, consider and take action on the TEA special education mediation as addressed in closed session. Uh, unless, Dr. Nelson, you have anything you want to add to that? No, then I'll entertain a motion. We recommend, Mr. President, may I speak? Yes, yes sir, Dr. Uh, Nelson. Respectfully, we recommend approval of the mediation settlement as discussed in closed session. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Sykes. Thank you, Mr. Pettis. Any other questions, comments, or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is there anything else from the dais at this no, point? I just want to thank Ms. Yolanda Williams for organizing a very successful December 2017 commencement ceremony for our December graduates. And I uh, thank those of you, Mr. Pettis, Ms. Cordway, who got here early for the awarding of those diplomas. I know it was important to those families. Uh, Yes, sir, Mr. Manning. I got one thing. Uh, after the meeting's over with, I need to know what time we uh, want to go to church at St. Yeah, and I, you're right. And I told him we'd, I'd text him which, which service we're coming to, so we need to make that decision as well. Uh, then at 9.30, hearing no objection, we'll stand adjourned. <laughs>